Hey friends, this is Coercion Current and today I wanted to show you two of those really interesting USB-C cables with U-shaped plugs and both of them have a normal end and one end where the plug is shaped like, like a U or uh, where it's just angled at a 180 degrees uh, backwards to the cable. And this is in both, both cases for a reason, but let's first get um, into the cables themselves and let's start with this one. And this one actually is really interesting because it says it's a USB-C gaming cable with U-shaped plug. And I'm not sure what a gaming USB-C cable is, but they tell, tell us that it's convenient to play games and fast charging the phone at the same time. So it seems like they advertise this as some kind of uh, gaming cable. And I'm quite sure that it's just to be used to browse your phone while lying in bed. And with the other cable, it's pretty much the same. They just don't tell a lot about the cable itself. They just say that it's a USB Type-C mail to USB Type-C mail cable um, in about 10 different languages uh, with the minimum amount of information possible. But let's first start with this one because the text on it is more interesting. And as it already says on the back side, accessories for consumers and professionals. So we're professionals here, so let's take a look. Okay, gaming cable, gaming cable, and some security and safety notices. Um, the first thing we see and then we can feel is that the cable itself feels quite flexible and thin. So if we take just one cable and focus on that, um, the cable itself feels really flexible and almost too flexible. So. I'm not sure what they meant with fast charging on the packaging, but if we compare it to, for example, this cable, where we know that the power rating actually is uh, 240 watts, so five amps of current, um, you can immediately see that the cable itself is quite a bit thicker. And with this cable, like I said, 240 watts and 40 gigabits per second data speed, so this is a high-end cable. With this cable, um, they don't actually tell us what kind of um, USB data transmission speed they, they actually support. Uh, it just says USB-C, so we don't know if it's USB 2 or 3, 3.1, 2, or even USB 4 um, with the data transmission, and also the same with the power transmission. So we don't know if it's th a 3 or 5 amp cable, uh, or um, if it features any kind of voltages above the uh, nominal 20 volts. Uh, voltage rating that, that the USB Interest Foundation or um, the Investors Foundation or whatever they are called um, mandates. So both of the connectors themselves, uh, if we take a look at them, look quite okay, especially the 180 degree connector is quite interesting. And now to its um, intended use case uh, for uh, using f your phone in bed, I have just a, a regular phone up here and if you take a look how to connect it, um, it's most certainly to be connected like this. So you can see that while lying in bed, you can hold your phone like this and you could uh, use it wi without the risk of actually bending the connector or um, having to rest it on your belly and um, breaking off, worst case, the connector inside your phone or you know, the connector on the cable, which would be um, sad anyways. So. That's what the cable is, is meant to do, and I'm quite sure that's what they mean with the gaming cable, um, because some people do actually game on their phones. Um, so now let's take a look inside the cable, what it can actually do, um, what kind of data transmission or power transmission the cable can do, and if it's actually um, usable in, in the way they, they advertise it at. And we can connect the connector the same way we connect, can connect it to a phone, so that's quite lucky. And the connector itself even has this little um, lightning bolt, so it would indicate that it can fast charge or whatever they, they define as fast charging. They, they don't say on the packaging. But, <laughs> okay, if we actually take a look at the, at the readings, we can imme immediately see it's a USB 2.0 cable, so 0 0.48 gigabits or 480 megabits per second data speed. And the charging power um, is rated at 10 watts. So it is just not a good cable. Um, even the cable health is not at 100%, even though I've just unpacked it. And 
looking at the specs, yes. So we can see USB 1.1 and 2.0, so it's, it's just a USB 2 cable um, with a nominal voltage of 5 volts, uh, theoretically up to 20 volts uh, if they built it according to the specs of, of USB-C cables. And with the currents, we can see that we are already limited to 2 amps, even though 3 amps is the, the nominal um, current rating of USB-C cables. This is most certainly to, to the internal resistance of the cable, but we're going to take a look at that in a second. Let's first take a look at the connector. And we can see um, the connected pins are um, Webus and ground, as well as the D plus and D minus for USB 2.0 speeds, and one of the CC pins so that the device is connected uh, with this cable between uh, your, for example, laptop, our phone, or your charger and phone, can actually agree on raising the voltages uh, from the nominal 5 volts to, um, let's say, um, 20 volts, and they can agree. Uh, in which direction do you actually want to transmit power from your phone to your laptop or from your laptop to your phone. Both cases are theoretically fine with the USB standard. But now let's take a look why um, the current is not, the current maximum current is not actually um, 3 amps but limited to 2 amps. So we go to the detail setting and then we can immediately see that the rebus resistance is at 203 milliohms. So this means that at 3 amps uh, of current, this cable would drop too much voltage um, at the 5 volt rail to actually stay within the nominal uh, voltage drop of a regular uh, USB power supply. So the, the phone you're connecting with this cable to, to your power supply will actually not be able to draw the full nominal uh, current of 3 amps from your power supply if it's able to do so and wants to do so, but it's limited by the cable itself. And what we can see, the pins connected are just like I said, V bus and ground, D plus and D minus for the USB 2.0, as well as uh, one of the CC pins. In, in this case, it's CC2 because of the direction I've plugged in the cable. Um, obviously, there is no e-marker inside the cable because it's just a USB 2 cable with even not the bare minimum of, of specs. So it, it has a too, too high of a resistance. Um, so they, they didn't actually bother to, to put in a, an e-marker because it's, it's just not needed. Um, so if you're thinking about buying this cable or bought this cable, I would recommend um, thinking about that again, because even just my, my regular phone would not charge um, quickly in any way or um, would be usable while gaming on it uh, in bed, because it, it would certainly drain the battery while being connected to, to my power socket. Now. With this out of the way, let's take a look at the second one. Maybe that one's better, um, even though the packaging uh, is quite a lot simpler and it doesn't say um, a lot at all on, on it. The cable itself is, is one meter. That's something I, I should say about that. Um, it is, the other one is, is, is three meters and I've measured it. it. It's actually around three meters. So um, that makes it even more difficult for them um, to, to handle the internal resistance of the cable. So. Let's take a look at this one, uh, the one meter type. Uh, there, is, there is not a lot of information in, so let's immediately take a look at the, the connectors. Uh, one of them, again, just has the manufacturer or um, producer, or whoever they are. And interestingly enough, the um, Conformity Europe or the recycling uh, and the recycling logo. So um, this one means according to um, European norms and standards, and this one says don't throw it uh, in the bin and please recycle it. Not sure why they put it on the connector itself because that's normally not required for cables like this. Um, and they even know that because they put it on the packaging like all other manufacturers do. Uh, whatever, that, that, that was a me, really, really sorry about um, letting you know this, but if you take a look at the U-shaped connector. That that one is more interesting than the other one. So they did actually manufacture some custom shaped uh, plastics part. So um, this end is thin and this end is wider. So even though the cable itself, if we can compare it to the other one, looks pretty much identical in the dimensions. And if we again compare it to the 240 watt cable, you can see the difference. Um, I'm quite sure that this one fares a bit better just due to the fact that it's a uh, short, shorter length uh, overall. Mm, again, the dimensions of this U-shaped connector 
pretty much fit all, all regular phones with regular dimensions. So uh, if we take a look at uh, this phone, you can see that there is still a lot of space left and you could hold it like that easily and, and comfortably if you're okay with not actually fast charging your phone. Now, let's do the same with this cable than we did with the other and just test it um, to take a look at what's inside, what it can actually do and what it can't do. Um, this cable <laughs> is pretty much identical to the other, just without the, with the difference, sorry, of the cable health being at 100% and therefore the charging power, the nominal charging power for 5 volts operations is at 15 watts. So the data speed again, uh, 0 0.48 gigabits or 480 megabits per second, which is USB 2.0 speed. And if we take a look, yes, it can do USB 1 and USB 2 speeds um, with voltages of nominal 5 volts, theoretically up to 20 volts and current now, not up to 2 amps, but up to 3 amps, uh, most certainly due to the lower uh, internal resistance of the cable, just due to the fact that it's shorter. The USB connector features the same pinout, USB, um, the voltage, uh, rebus, ground, one of the CC pins as well as D plus and D minus. Now, the cable, the other cable we, we saw earlier had the, the three in the middle mirrored to the bottom. This is just due to the fact um, that I connected it this way around if I flip this connector around and plug it in like this. Then we will be immediately able to see um, that also those three pins have flipped around due to the fact that the cable um, itself and the, the connector itself is reversible. Uh, for practical applications, this shouldn't matter, so this shouldn't change anything at all. Um, it's just interesting to know. And what we can see, the USB pins connected, we bus ground CC2, um, D plus, D minus. With this cable, they actually connect the shield, so they did bother to put in a shield, or if they didn't, they connected the, the, at least the pin in, inside the connector. So we can assume that this cable, if you want to transmit data at USB 2 speeds, should be um, shielded against um, cross EMI or um, electromagnetic interference from, from other devices, cables, um, large current uh, drawing applications that, that can interfere with the data inside the cable. Um, in any way, the available options, like I said, USB 1 and 2, with a reverse resistance now of 113 milliohms, which is below the 203, I think, we, we had earlier with the earlier cable. So even though 130 milliohms is not too low, so it's high enough uh, for your phone uh, or your tablet or whatever you connect uh, with this cable, actually seeing the voltage drop, it should still be fine. So you, you should si still be able to charge your device at, at roughly three amps of maximum current if the charger actually can do this and your phone can actually um, use it. With the eMac information, no eMac inside, as is customary with cheap cables like this for USB 2 speeds and charging powers of, of 15 watts or theoretically up to 16 watts, that's not, not, not necessary. So no, no USB mark included. So now I've told you everything about this cable and also everything about that cable. And we know that even though they come from two different manufacturers, internally they are almost identical. So this one features shield and this one doesn't. This one is a bit shorter, but both of them actually are quite high resistance cables. Um, if, if you take a look at how thin they actually are and what they can actually do. Still, you could charge your phone with it overnight. It doesn't matter if you have eight hours of time or how, however long you sleep, it will still be full afterwards, but don't expect it to, to last on a full charge while being connected and you playing, I don't know, Fortnite on your phone or whatever um, people normally do. With this, that's everything I have for today. And if you have any questions, just put them in the comments below. And yeah, thanks for watching.